Uh, hi grifters. Welcome back to the channel that showcases the process of turning a turd of a boat into a tidy boat. You've found your way back, or just discovered our Grift Code channel. And in this video, we're going through a seamlessly narrated montage of strapping on a motor guide XI5 to Dora the Quintrex Explorer. I'm really excited because we get to finally bin our Ming Dynasty Transom Electric for some high-tech metal and plastic that can talk to the sky. Now, we can't just bolt our motor guide straight to the bow, as Dora wasn't born with a thick front deck. It's actually woefully thin and I didn't feel comfortable mounting my very expensive weed whacker on top of the bow. I knew a bow thruster plate was the solution to my problem, but the problem to my solution is I don't know how to weld aluminium, so I went to the internet. Did you know there's an app that helps you get in contact with people who are really handy with their tools? This is where I met Renard. After a few deck picks and explaining what I really wanted, Renard agreed to help me out. The app's actually called High Pages, for those that don't want to joke around. As you would have obviously guessed, the process started by lifting up the floor of the boat and fixing some cracked welds. With a quick brush and a zap, we've destroyed our inbuilt trampoline so we could get onto the real work at hand. We started by piecing together our bow thruster plate off of the boat. Because I'm a cheapskate, we welded together offcuts of 10mm plate aluminium for our flat mounting surface. And because I'm a bad person, I failed to give Renard a decent welding surface, so we had to use the narrow brick retaining wall. The mounting surface of our bow thruster plate is probably a size XL. Not because we planned it, but because I didn't plan and I wasn't certain on the exact position of the motor guide. To strengthen our diving board, we added a perimeter made of 15mm solid square bar. After some more artistic b-roll of welding and not showing you exactly what's going on, the plate and perimeter were welded to the boat. The underside support was welded to the shear line whilst the plate was welded to the foredeck brace. Welding the thick plate to Dora's thin little foredeck was challenging, even for Renard. The heat caused the thin sheet to warp and distort away from the plate, leaving a small hollow on the front edge of the bow. Instead of worrying about this hollow, we persevered ahead like people who just wanted to finish the job and go fishing. After a little more polishing of the floater and the welding was done. We couldn't have our shiny deck flapping out in the breeze so the next step was to cover it up. I tried my best to do a reasonable job of sanding and painting but in the end I worked out I'm not very good at it. I covered the deck in two coats of etch primer followed by two coats of marine enamel paint. Consequently I also covered everything in the driveway with two coats of etch primer followed by two coats of marine enamel paint. I wasn't aware of how long enamel paint took to dry, and for those of you that are here to learn something, that's something you can take away. It took literally weeks for the paint to fully harden. I impatiently moved straight into mounting the motor guide onto the new surface before everything had hardened. Whilst it was dry to the touch, it was still a little soft in the thicker sections. Now that the welding and painting is done, this shows a little clearer how the platform was connected to the boat by welding the perimeter to the shear line and the cross brace. The paint runs are actually structural too, so I'll leave them in there. Moving on, the quick release plate needs to be connected to the motor for spontaneous fishing jaunts. The Delrin plate mounts directly to the aluminium base via six M6 bolts. This process requires a safe space to swear as the design of the bracket provides barely enough room to use the washers as they fail on the internal wall. Be patient and try and wind on the washers. That'll make a bit more sense when you actually have to do it. After you've emotionally recovered from that ordeal, you should probably check to see if you've installed the retaining clip onto the correct side. Now that we've got everything together, both mentally and physically, we can start playing with the position of the electric motor. This took a little bit of time and patience and some reasonable guesstimation. It is necessary to check that the shaft of the motor guard doesn't foul on the edge of the bow thruster plate in its vertical position. Some allowance needs to be made in case of the shaft bending in case you hit something. The plan was to position the head of the motor guide over the gunnel so it was entirely out of the way when it was stowed. It was possible to mark the position onto some tape, but it was at this point that I realised that it'd be really hard to work out where to actually drill the holes. After removing the motor guide for the 20th time, I flipped it over and covered the base plate in some masking tape. This was surprisingly one of those tips I pilfered from those shitty Facebook DIY videos. The idea is that you can make a template of the holes and transpose them onto another surface. 
It honestly worked really well. After spot drilling one hole, I could mount the base plate onto the platform and recheck the position of the motor guide in both its stowed and vertical position. The position ended up being perfect and exactly what I wanted. Now, removing the motor guide for the 21st time, I drilled out the remaining holes. Drilling through the Delrin plate was a smart way of double checking the template, but it ended up being smack bang on the pre-marked holes. Now with all the holes drilled out, we could easily mount down the mounting plate for what we expect to be the very last time. But not for me, because I totally forgot to paint the bare metal with some Duralac. Just imagine I did that during this corrupted footage stage. You guys should know by now I'm not an expert with wiring or electricals or anything really, but I'll take you through how I did do the electricals. I started by getting some marine grade cable. Chop the end and burn your hand while you try and solder on a dodgy rig. With your tinned ends, crimp some battery terminals onto the cable and seal the ends. The astute of you would have noticed I originally had heat shrink but I couldn't actually feed it over the terminal, so I used electrical tape instead, liquid electrical tape. After that, I put the terminal cable onto the battery and kind of got an idea of the cable routing. And maybe I should have done that first, but it worked for me. What you can see here is a 60 amp marine circuit breaker. This will protect your motor guide from blowing up, or at least that's what I'm told it'll do. This circuit breaker is in line with the positive cable to the motor guide. Uh, and it's really important to secure it whilst wearing your coolest glasses. If you don't do that, it will fail. Now, testing some cable routing, you can get an idea of where to snip your positive cable. This will give you a or two ends to go into your inlet and your outlet of the circuit breaker. After installing the circuit breaker and the cabling, it's definitely worth checking to see if you're still getting a read of voltage after the circuit breaker. I did do this, but I forgot to film it, and you'll have to trust me on that. Now, it's time to move on to my favorite electrical device, Mr. Anderson Plugs. Now, this isn't the best video to watch on how to install Anderson Plugs, and it's probably best to Google that specifically, and probably best to Google most of this stuff specifically, because I am not a very good coach. But I wanted to show you how I installed these connections for my motor guide. I found some nice rubber covers to limit water ingress into the plugs. And these are pretty nifty and I haven't seen any corrosion on the terminals yet. And just a spoiler, I did this quite a while ago. After another check to see if we're getting power to the plugs, we can actually power up the motor guide. And we have power, thank Christ for that. That was probably as arduous for you as it was for me. But thankfully, we have officially installed a bow-mounted electric motor to Dora. I should probably explain why I bought a motor guide. A longish story made shorter, I wanted a system that could integrate with my Lowrance units. Now, you could probably do some Googling and find a lot of stuff, but I can get autopilot on this and I can set some waypoints and thingies. But long story short is, there's some more intelligent things that I can do with my Lowrance unit and the XI5. To get these things integrated, I do need to install a Namiya cable, and I haven't done that yet. And if you're interested in watching me do that, I can make a video and just post a comment. Some of you would have already seen that we've been out there to test out this unit. And it's pretty incredible at holding us in some severe wind. If you don't believe us, check out the Woi Woi video that we did not long ago. Uh, and that was our first major jaunt with the motor guide. Anyway guys, that pretty much sums it up. Thanks again for making it this far. It's really rewarding to see how far this little tinny has already come, but there is still heaps more to do. If you've enjoyed it, I'd suggest subscribing to the channel, but I've also heard that if you subscribe, you will catch more fish. That I think is scientifically proven. Anyway, try it out, stick around, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.